Hi guys, so welcome back to another tutorial on Apache Cassandra. In this tutorial, we're gonna look at the compaction process, i.e. how Cassandra consolidate two SS tables into a single SS table. And compaction can be thought of sort of like delayed IO, which happens in the background in Cassandra, as all the nodes in our cluster try and do cleanup operations and make our data as efficiently stored as possible. And it's very important for read speeds or maintaining good read speeds, as we wanna be able to search through as few SS tables as possible when performing a read. And it's also a sort of housekeeping operation where data is merged and deleted to clean up our data. So in this example, we have two SS tables. We have SS table one here, and we've also got SS table two here. And we wanna merge these together into a new SS table. And remember that SS tables are immutable. We cannot add or change to an SS table. So what we have to do is we have to create a new SS table that is a representation of the most up-to-date data in both of these SS tables. So we have SS table three here, which will combine data from SS table two and SS table one. And what will happen is we'll go through the records in both SS tables and decide which records it needs to put in SS table three, which records it needs to delete, which records are most up to date, etc., etc. So first it will scan SS table one. It will see that there's a USA employee with an ID of one. And it will check SS table also has an employee with ID one called John but it will take the latest timestamp. In this case, 93 is a greater timestamp than 63. So we'll write the data from SS table two, USA, employee ID one, name John, and the timestamp 93, because that is the latest. We'll then move to the next line, USA two for Jim. We'll see that there's also that ID in SS table two. So what it will do is we'll write the one with the latest timestamp, in this case, again, SS table two, and the name is tamed to Jimmy, so that's deemed the most up-to-date data. So that will be written to the new SS table three, ID two, and the new name, Jimmy, with the timestamp 102. Next, we'll move to USA employee with ID number five, whose name was originally Amy, but we can see in the new SS table, there's also an employee with five, and the timestamp is later. And in fact, this is what's called a tombstone which means the data has now been deleted from our database. So this record here will not be written to the new SS table as it's no longer needed. We'll continue to scan. We'll see that there's employee number seven, Bob. His name has changed to Bobby in SS table two. So we'll see which has the latest timestamp. Again, 103 is greater than 61. So we'll write that out to the new SS table as the most up-to-date record, Bobby and timestamp 103. And the last record is USA 9, again, in both tables. It's been tombstoned or deleted in SS table two, and that's got the most recent up-to-date record, so it will not need to be written to the new SS table. It's also possible that tables might have records that are not in the other table. So this table might have USA 11 name Brian and timestamp, say, 51. This one might have USA, let's say 13, name Megan, and timestamp 101. So the creation of the new SS table three, we'll go through table one. We'll see that this record exists in table one. We'll check SS table two, see that it doesn't exist. And so it will go and write the record that only exists in one SS table to the new SS table with the name Brian and the timestamp 51, as that is the latest timestamp and version of the data it could find. It will do the same for SS table two, where we can see that ID 13 exists in SS table two, but not SS table one. It will write that to the new SS table and store the timestamp. And because this is only exists in one SS table, it's considered the latest data. It's important to note that this operation happens in memory. And once completed, SS table three will be written to disk and we can then safely delete the data in SS table one and SS table two as the most up-to-date data is contained in SS table three, which has now been successfully written to disk.
So thanks for watching this video on compaction in Cassandra. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to leave them in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.